Hi everyone, today I'm going to watercolor with some stencils and water brush pens. So let's jump right in. This is the Funky Blots stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. It's a six by nine and I do have pixie spray on it for this technique. I also have some watercolor paper and I have my Karen or Kareen, I don't know how to say them, brush markers, which are water brush pens. And that is what I use to create this look today. So on this card, I'm going to show you how I created this fun look and also this bit of a drop shadow. So to start, I am going to lay down this stencil with pixie spray down on this watercolor paper. I believe this is Canson XL, so it's not an expensive or a high end um, watercolor paper and it doesn't have a, a particular, particularly um, harsh tooth, if you will, like it doesn't have too much texture. So to start, I'm just going to pick some colors of these Corinne water brush markers, and I'm gonna scribble some down right on my work surface. I do have a glass mat, and I'm gonna spritz it with water and use my um, watercolor brush here just to kind of start getting the color right in. Now, as you can see, my brush wasn't very wet to start, so it didn't really wanna get in there. And as you'll see in a little bit, I do end up kind of trial and error figuring out that my one inch watercolor brush is actually going to work better. So you may have seen in some of my other videos that I like to watercolor with stencils. I do it in various different ways, but I don't know that I've ever really tried it with my Karen markers before. So um, you would probably get in fact, I know you would get a deeper saturation or more pigmented color if you were to use like a liquid watercolor or a re-inker, like a Distress Ink re -inker. So it would be even more pigmented, I think, than this. But if you don't have those, or you want to get these markers out and give them a go in maybe a non-traditional way, then this is a fun way to watercolor with them. So I can tell that this is a little bit lighter than I wanted, so I'm kind of starting back up at the top and going through those four colors again, just to add a little bit more pigment and a little bit brighter color. So you can see it's working a lot better with this one inch watercolor brush, and I did stop being lazy and I got a little um, jar of water just to actually saturate the brush because it made it a lot easier to kind of get it down in the wells of the, the stencil. So this is a fun way to watercolor through your stencil if you don't have watercolor paints or don't have re-inkers re or liquid watercolors. So you can see you get this fun, whimsical, soft, watercolory look in the shape of your stencil. So the key here is probably the pixie spray. You don't need it, but I think you will get crisper results if you do use a temporary adhesive like pixie spray. So here I'm using these Gina Marie, it's like a cloud shaped edger die. Um, if I can find it, I will link it in the video description box below, but I'm using my mint tape from uh, scrapbook.com and running that through uh, my die cutting machine to give it that cool fun edge and it does bring it down slightly smaller than A2. Now here I have a white gel pen in kind of a thicker size. This is probably an eight or a 10. And I'm putting a little bit of a reflection, like just a little line towards the left of all of these cool blobby shapes. Okay, because I want to give it a look like it's highlighted. Then I do decide to go a step further and give it a bit of a drop shadow because I really want it to look like it's three-dimensional. So the way that I'm going to do this is to just take my stencil again and line it up and then just kind of kick it off just ever so slightly to the side so that there's a little bit of a white line to the opposite side of my highlight. And then I have my my black blending brush with just some residual ink on it. And I'm just going to very lightly go just to the right side of these openings. Now what this is gonna do is put this really cool drop shadow on the side of all of these blobs. So you could maybe start with the gray um, and then do the color over it, but I found that this worked just as well. And it's very subtle. When you look at it in person, you can see that cool drop shadow. So it gives it some faux dimension, even though it's flat and it's just essentially watercolor with a little highlight drawn on. Now I wanna finish the card, so I'm shopping my Critter Book. This is my storage solution for um, my 
critters that are already stamped and colored and cut out or die cut out and ready to go. So I'm just kind of shopping through and figuring out what direction I want to go. I have no specific plan in mind. I just know it's whimsical and fun and colorful and I know that I want to use some sort of critter. So if you haven't watched any of my other videos um, and don't know about my my storage and my batching Betty tendencies, then um, this is how I do it. This is how I'm able to mass produce so many cards. It's just by having a lot of the components ready to go. So this is my book that I have for my um, sentiment strips. So these are all like kind of strip style. These are label stamps from, I think, Mama Elephant. And I'm just cutting out really close to the edge, just leaving a really slight white border, and they're all birthday themed. So as you guessed it, this is a birthday card, and I'm going to use these in tandem with these cute little monster critters that I had. Um, I believe they're probably Copic colored. It's possible that I may have colored them with a water brush pen, kind of similar to what I used, but I think they were probably Copic colored. And then to tie in a little bit more black, I decided to use this polka dot pattern paper from My Favorite Things, just because I felt like it needed something to tie in the black to match the label sentiments. So I'm picking one that has one of the smaller polka dots because I want to make sure some of it shows because it's not a huge border around the edge of this panel. So I'm just going to cut that down to size and um, attach that to the card base. The card base is 120 pound accent opaque cardstock and this will cover the entire front and then you'll just see a little bit of that poking out around the edges of the watercolor panel just to kind of tie in that black. So I will use probably that extra strip here on the inside just to give it a little bit of an extra design element and to not waste this little strip of pattern paper. I'll kind of continue the design onto the inside. And I'll trim off this little bit of extra with my scissors and thankfully not cut into my card base because let's be real, I do that. Um, and then these I'm going to lay kind of whimsical and um, deliberately not straight and kind of line them up with these three cute little critters here that kind of match the colors um, of my water coloring. So I'm just going to use some tape runner here and attach this down directly on the pattern paper and then I will attach all the other pieces parts onto the front of the card. And I have these little foam strips. Um, these are my favorite for behind labels and maybe little fiddly, fiddly bits of die cuts and things like that. But you get I think 10 sheets of them or like 500 of them for I think around $9.99 or something like that on Amazon. And I have yet to get through an entire package. So these last a really long time. I think I've even given some away and I still haven't gotten through it. So I will link that in the video description box below if you're interested in those or any of the other products that are available, I will link them below. So just expand and scroll down. Um, and if they're affiliate links, that will be no additional cost to you, but I may make a small commission. And that is really helpful, helps me out a lot. So if you're um, wanting to support your favorite YouTubers, then that's the way to do it is just follow their affiliate links because it's no additional cost to you, but it will help you support their channel. So here I have these um, really cute, this really cute blingage mix. This is from a company that sadly is no longer, it was called Doodles Paper Playground, but I'm just kind of picking out colors that match the range um, in various different sizes. And I'm kind of trying to line up the colors with the colors in that part of the panel. And uh, I will liquid glue those down and that's gonna finish the card. So super fun and whimsy, colorful, It'd be great for a kid or honestly even adult. I would, I would get a kick out of getting a card like this. So don't think that critter stamps are just for, for adults. They're for kids too. So thank you so much for spending time with me today. If you enjoyed this, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing and be sure to check out the rest of the July release. Tons of good stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye.